Going to pot. Soon, CVS, the drugstore, won't sell cigarettes, and the FDA is launching a brand new anti-tobacco campaign. But pot, now legal in a couple of states, as the president has been downplaying the effects of marijuana. Makes you wonder, whatever happened to the war on drugs? John Walters is the former director of National Drug Control and Policy under George W. Bush, the so-called drug czar. He joins us live this morning from D.C. Good morning to you, John. Good morning, Steve. Yeah, whatever did happen to the war on drugs? Once upon a time, it was big, and now, mm, not so bad. Yeah, well, there's still a lot of people trying to keep kids safe. There are a lot of people getting treated. Uh, unfortunately, some of them die, as we've seen with Mr. Hoffman recently. And there's still a lot of, you know, uh, police and DEA agents and others out there risking their lives. A person that's taken a hike is President Obama. I mean, he and the Attorney General have stopped enforcing the law, not changed the law, not had a discussion about this, just willfully said, well, we don't think this should happen. And unfortunately, we know we've seen this in our own culture. This is going to cause more people to get sick. And not only with marijuana, but as you know, Mr. Hoffman and President Obama's own discussion of his own use, it, it doesn't just end with marijuana. When you start with marijuana, you go on to cocaine or heroin mm -hmm. and other things. So um, the drugs are as bad, if not worse than ever in their potency and the danger. Uh, but leadership is not there. Yeah, you were referring to the president's own comments about uh, marijuana. He said uh, recently, quote, I view it, marijuana, as a bad habit and a vice, not very different from the cigarettes that I smoked as a, a young uh, person. I don't think it is more dangerous than alcohol. Famously, you know, you read uh, one of those books by the New Yorker guy. Uh, he smoked a lot of pot. He did cocaine, our president did, when he was a young person. Now it, it sounds like, you know, He's supporting CVS uh, for not uh, for stopping selling tobacco and yet smoking pot. Mm. Yeah, I, I think there's an important issue there you touch on and it should be emphasized. Um, supply and demand have to be attacked both. And uh, we've done a lot to try to encourage people. We've all had relatives die painfully from cigarette smoking effects and consequences and cancer. But we need also control the supply. If kids and, and people have it uh, uh, available cheap, uh, it's it's more of a danger. What he's done with marijuana is he's allowed it to become a, a corner store in Colorado. And sure. The federal law has not changed. And this is, you can see this talk about how many billion dollars this business is going to grow if uh, it's been projected even in the Wall right. Street Journal. So um, why do we need more of this? I mean, why is it that we can't be consistent about talking about threats? And he doesn't have to arrest a single person. He could have used his connection with young people to explain what's wrong. Instead, he kind of willfully decided that uh, he was going to be cool at the cost of a yeah. lot of young lives. Yeah, and John, as, as we go, uh, every time we do a story on pot, I, I, we get an email from people, uh, you know, pot is no worse than alcohol, and you're always talking about alcohol. But when you were on last time, you know, the scientific evidence is that pot impacts a young person's IQ. It makes you dumber in the long run. Yeah, I mean, this is a kind of chemical brain damage that we had known about 15, 20 years ago. And we now have growing research about that, about the connection to both triggering and worsening uh, depression, serious mental illness, thoughts of suicide in young people. We know the teenage brain is more malleable because it's being it's maturing. We didn't know this before, but right. now we do. This is like asking for an epidemic of brain damage in our kids. And it's just so irresponsible. And, and to know better and to say this is... I think inexcusable. All right, John Walters, uh, once upon a time, the drugs are for the United States of America. John, thank you very much for joining us live. Thank you, Steve.